Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Say hello. Hey guys. Today I'm here to talk about my birth story. Well, it's our birth story, isn't it? Two births happened that day. He was born and I was born as a mother. I'm making this video for you guys as always, but also for myself because I, I feel like I want to get this information on record so that my future self can remember with as much clarity as possible the events of that day. It was a very transformative day as you can imagine we're already eight months postpartum time is flying before i gave birth and actually to this very day i get asked a lot people will comment saying how did you give birth in brazil weren't you afraid wasn't that scary to give birth in another country i just think like of all the things to be afraid of surrounding birth surrounding the idea of pushing a human out of you the idea of where you're doing it as far as country is the like way down on the list for the majority of my pregnancy I didn't know where I would be giving birth. I was traveling a lot. I was in Colombia, the US, Uruguay, and then finally landing here in Brazil. When you're traveling like that and you don't know where you're gonna end up, it's very challenging to do consistent prenatal care because you just don't even know where you're gonna be. I don't recommend going about it that way, but that's what happened for me. When I we finally landed here in Brazil, I was already six months pregnant and I hadn't done a lot of the necessary testing, just basic stuff to get ready for the birth. I wanted to give birth in the most natural way possible, which is to say at home with a doula or a midwife or in some sort of an environment where I could give birth in the water, something along those lines. I didn't really have my mind set exactly how that was gonna be, but I knew I wanted to avoid the hospital. I don't like the hospital environment. I wanted to avoid medical intervention, drugs, all of that. Brazil has one of the highest rates of C-sections. There are doulas here, there are midwives that will service you. You're paying out of pocket. So it wasn't even a question of if I could afford it or not because I couldn't. I was looking for other options and I found through the public health system there is one Casa de Pato, which is a midwife house, about two hour commute from where I live. I decided, you know what, it's important to me, I'm going to make the trek, I'm going to do my prenatal care there, I'm going to give birth there, that's what I want to do. They only service very low risk pregnancies, which I was. What I learned very quickly was that as much as you can prepare, as much as you can have an idea of what you want, as specific as it might be, things rarely, 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 if ever, go completely according to plan. On the one side, there's the option of having a C-section, but I was really on the exact opposite extreme of wanting just the most zenned out environment possible. I'd made all the preparations. I'd done the, the prenatal care at this midwife house. I'd met the women. I was speaking Portuguese with them. I was feeling really good. I was loving, loving, loving all of my planning. And then I was 10 days overdue. My mucus plug was released, but I, my water hadn't broke yet. I was feeling really pregnant. <laughs> I was really wanting this baby to get out of me already. I was having regular contractions and when they got to the point where they were about, about five minutes apart, I called the midwife house and I said, listen, these are my symptoms. Can I come? Please let me come. So they're like, yes, yes, come. When I got there, they did a few exams on me and they told me, you're going to have to go to the hospital. What are you talking about? I'm a low risk pregnancy. I've been low risk this whole time. And they said, we know, but there's a chance that he made a mer merconium poo. Is that what it's called? Basically when the baby has a bowel movement inside of you and that can cause a lot of complications. They weren't even sure that he had done it, but they said there's a possibility. Well, if there's any risk whatsoever, they send you to the hospital. Immediately, my dreams were just plummeted to the ground. I couldn't believe it. I was really disappointed. I was crying. There was no turning back. Like there was no going home at this point because I was already 10 days overdue. And so they have a policy that when you're already that far along, you need to get this baby out. So I go to the hospital. I was separated from Mauricio, it was kind of traumatic. The doctor didn't have very good bedside manner. He just kind of told me, okay, I'm doing an exam now and like did his thing. And I was just, what's going on? There's women everywhere. I just was really in shock. Like I, this was not what I wanted. The contrast was night and day from what I had planned and what I envisioned and what I dreamed of. And then what was really happening. And I, I just was in shock. I couldn't believe it. Eventually I was reunited with Mauricio and they put us in this waiting room with some other women just waiting to get induced. There was a 24 hour wait one of the last exams that they did for me was an ultrasound and when they did this ultrasound they discovered that Max was around four kilos he was a big baby <laughs> a nurse comes in and she has this platter of needles and an IV she starts setting stuff up next to me and I 
I'm just looking at her like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm setting you up for your C-section. What? <laughs> no. What are you talking about? No one said anything about a C-section. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. I need to talk to the doctor. Let me talk to the doctor. And she was like, okay, okay, I'll let you talk to the doctor. The doctor comes in and he explains to me that when a baby is four kilos or more, then they will do a C-section. So there's no other risk. There's no, you didn't see anything else that he was breached, that he was upside down, that he was any other risk factor for him to have a, for me to have a c-section he said no and so i pleaded with him i was crying i said please doctor please let me try to do this naturally i really want to do this naturally and he said okay you do what you want to do no shame or anything on any women who want to have a c-section or want to give birth with an epidural or however you want to do it everyone has the right to pick however way they want to give birth but for me personally i was just please 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 drug free surgery free please that night around 10 o'clock i was induced and then around midnight my water broke which was a really crazy sensation I could actually hear it go like pop Mauricio was by my side the whole time he was helping me through it the contractions started to kick up but they kept on checking me and I kept on being two centimeters dilated two three centimeters dilated for hours and I, I didn't understand it because my contractions were definitely getting progressively worse but my centimeters dilation was the same it was the same for hours and hours and hours and I was like what is happening why am I not getting dilated <laughs> oh so frustrating and I was walking around I was trying to move to dance to do squats to do anything because when you're having contractions all you want to do is curl up in a ball and die basically <laughs> you're just in so much pain you just want to lay down you don't you don't want to be standing up but it's counterintuitive because standing up moving around doing squats is actually what's going to help you a few hours into it I was actually like <laughs> Can I have a C-section? <laughs> I was in a lot of pain and I was like, why did I say no to the C-section? This could be over by now. Another part of me was stronger and saying, no, this is what you wanted. This is what you worked for. You can do this. You're made to do this. Your body's designed for this. You can do this. Keep going, keep pushing. You got this. Pushing on my lower back. That was, that was the best thing that I could have asked for. It was the only thing that really significantly relieved me of pain. My water broke at midnight around eight o'clock. They checked my dilation and suddenly, Miraculously, it had jumped to an eight. I'm in a public hospital here in Brazil, and so you're with other women. You're with kind of in this waiting area. You have your own private bed with like a separation thing, but you're all in basically the same room. And they say, you know, you're gonna stay in this environment until you're six centimeters dilated, and then we'll find a room for you, like a private room for you to give birth in. Well, I had jumped to eight centimeters, so they were scrambling all of a sudden trying to get a room situated for me. I could barely walk, but I was slowly inching my way towards this room and I get there. I think a lot of people, especially in the Western world, when you think of giving birth, when you have this image of a woman in labor, it's usually a woman in a hospital with her legs up in a stirrup laying down horizontally pushing and the doctor receiving the baby. That's actually really counterintuitive to how birth happens, how it's meant to happen I should say, because you're working against gravity and it makes a lot more sense to be vertical, to be standing up or to be squatting or in some sort of a position where the baby can fall out of you. It makes the job a lot easier. They had this seat with a hole in it and I was I could basically squat, but it wasn't working. It wasn't working for me in that I wasn't comfortable, I wasn't stable, I was really weak, my body was just giving out and so they brought in this other chair that was pure genius whoever invented this chair deserves a Nobel Peace Prize I feel like it was basically like you were in a cat cow position but a little bit more elevated so it had support for your knees it had a, a rest for you to put your arms and your head I, I was basically in this kind of a position I pushed for about 30 minutes and my son was born how was it how was the actual birthing experience well after you've been in pain for so long with the contractions the actual process of him coming out was so short-lived it was definitely more painful but it was so short-lived and you're basically at the finish line at that point so you're mentally just like every contraction every push you're that much closer you're that much closer and it really gets so much more real that helped me a lot to deal with the pain to deal with the ring of fire as they say which was real for me <laughs> this burning sensation when you feel his head coming out sorry this is TMI you're so tired you're so exhausted I remember the days afterwards my body felt like I had run a marathon and I have run a marathon before so I know what that feels like and it was the best comparison I could say because during the contractions during the pushing your whole body is 
tensing up and you don't even realize it you're just tensing and then relaxing and then tensing and then relaxing it's a workout you know <laughs> your body is getting a workout and afterwards you're just like oh you can relax and you can feel the soreness the birthing itself is really quick from the time that they're crowning until they're all the way out it's a matter of seconds I was so relieved to have him the birthing of the placenta was nothing to me it was just like something sliding out of me it didn't feel like anything and it's weird because you can feel his head and then he kind of stops at the shoulders and you have to do another really big strong push to get past the shoulder and then he just slides on out <laughs> sorry if this is too much information but it's such an interesting experience and it's such like a, a threshold into womanhood i feel like once you give birth you become a member of this exclusive club of women who've given birth you have something in common in that regard i love this subject i feel like it's important to share and it's important to be transparent about because it's something that many people will go through and if you haven't gone through it personally then you know someone who has or you were birthed by someone so it's a it's a human experience that we can all relate to on some level. I am so, so, so infinitely grateful to this country, to Brazil, for welcoming me, for allowing me to give birth in their public health system for free. It blows my mind that a country that's third world, that's corrupt, that's poor, that's, you know, you can say a lot of things about Brazil, but the one thing that they do get right is healthcare. And I'm not gonna argue about if it's a perfect system because I know it's not. I know there's a lot of problems, there's a lot of flaws, but the fact that anyone can get serviced here, that they see healthcare as a human right is so important to me and it's so, it, it's mind blowing to me as someone who comes from a system that you have to be paying insurance monthly, you have to be getting all this uh, deductibles and blah blah blah, it's really confusing and then at the end of the day you still get handed the bill. Going back to the beginning of the video when I said a lot of people, mostly Americans, will ask me, D weren't you afraid to give birth in Brazil? Aren't you afraid to give birth in Brazil? Honestly, I'm more scared to give birth in the US. I'm more scared to walk out of the hospital with a $5,000 plus bill, even with insurance, which I don't even have, so it would have been a lot more. The system is what it is. There, Neither one is perfect. I don't claim that the US is perfect, definitely not, and I don't claim that Brazil is perfect either, but I know that from my experience, I wouldn't have done it any other way. I could complain about some of the bedside service. Yes, I could complain about having to share a room with other women. Yes, I could complain about whatever, but it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, I was serviced. It was free. I was treated very well. I was treated respectfully. Being not from here and being in this vulnerable situation of giving birth, what more could I ask for? It wasn't as I planned. It wasn't how I wanted it originally, but it was perfect in its own way. And now I have Max, so there's just no looking back. He's the prize. He's the best. All right, you guys, if you like this video, if you have anything to share about your birthing experience, feel free to leave anything at all down in the comment section down below. I'd love to read about your stories and any questions you have, always please let them fly free. I'm here to answer your questions and make more videos. I would love to make a postpartum video. That's a whole other subject. If you like this video, give it a nice big thumbs up. I appreciate that. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you next time. Beijos.